Tesla's brand new V4 superchargers are finally opening here in the US and they feature the latest fast charging technology, which is really exciting, but some Tesla owners might not be too happy about it and I'll explain why. And Tesla also just did something that's never been done before and it will change the game for EV charging and just might be the final knockout moment for gas cars. That and more on today's first episode of Tesla Tuesday, where I go over the past week's top Tesla news in 10 minutes. Now, almost five years ago, Tesla released their V3 superchargers, which were a big upgrade from the previous V1 and V2 superchargers, with the V3 having the ability to charge at 250 kilowatts compared to just 150 kilowatts. Now, the V3 superchargers also brought the benefit of not sharing power among the stalls so each vehicle could reach its maximum charging speed. Now, we're starting to see the next generation Tesla V4 superchargers here in the US after they were first opened in Europe earlier this year. Now the V4 superchargers are currently limited to the same 250 kilowatt output as V3, but eventually V4 will be capable of 350 kilowatts just in time for the Cybertruck delivery event, which I do plan to be at, so subscribe to see my video on that. But the Cybertruck will be the only Tesla vehicle for the foreseeable future to take advantage of that 350 kilowatt charging rate at the new V4 superchargers because Cybertruck is confirmed to have 800 volt architecture while all other Tesla vehicles up to this point are still only 400 volts. Now there are some non-Tesla vehicles that are also 800 volts, such as the Hummer EV and Porsche Taycan, both of which will be able to take advantage of that 350 kilowatt rate at the new V4 superchargers, since they will be designed to accommodate nearly any EV. Now, hopefully we'll see all Tesla vehicles eventually go to 800 volts because charging at 350 kilowatts could allow them to regain over 100 miles of range in just five minutes. Now the new V4 chargers have a redesigned dispenser, which is basically the stall where the charging cable is stored. Now the cable itself is three feet longer than its predecessor coming in at nine and a half feet long. And the longer cable is crucial for the huge Cybertrucks and also for all the non-Tesla vehicles that will begin using Tesla superchargers when they all get the NAX charging connector or even when the non-Teslas charge using the magic dock that the new V4 superchargers seem to have installed along with an all new built-in screen for processing payments. Now the first V4 superchargers in the US have been spotted in Nevada, Oregon, Georgia, and there's even one in my old stomping grounds of Prattville, Alabama, which I might be able to see up close in person next month, so I'll try to capture that in video for you. But you may be seeing a lot of negative news recently about electric vehicles and how they aren't selling well and how dealers are losing money with unsold EVs sitting on a lot for long periods of time. And a lot of that has to do with the high interest rates. But a big reason is that people are still scared of the charging experience, but that fear may be coming to an end. Now, I've been doing YouTube videos for years, and I'm finally going to address a popular comment I've gotten from multiple people, including Christopher Flouten4525, who has said in the past, why don't you shave? And he really needs to shave that pathetic attempt at a beard. Well, Christopher Flouten4525, guess who else can't grow a good beard? Elon Musk. Yeah, and he's a millionaire. Billionaire. But that doesn't matter anymore because shaving is finally enjoyable thanks to today's sponsor, Henson Shaving. I used to hate shaving because I used cheap plastic razors that irritated my skin, but shaving with Henson's AL13 razor gets me a safe, comfortable shave every time. It's made from the same aircraft grade aluminum using aerospace standards at their facility where they've made satellite components for over 20 years. Now, this results in the highest quality and precision I've ever seen in a razor. It's engineered to limit the movement of the blade while allowing it to only expose a tiny sliver of the blade at the optimum angle that gives a remarkably close and smooth shave. It's lightweight for easy maneuvering and built to last with a lifetime warranty. I think this could easily be my only razor I use for the rest of my life. And the packaging is 100% plastic free, while the metal blades can be recycled, making it the most sustainable choice, which is very important for what you and I look for in products these days. And similar to how EVs require no fossil fuels and less maintenance compared to gas cars, a Henson razor uses 10 cent blades compared to $3 disposable razors, which means a lower lifetime cost. The Henson razor is the best shaving experience I've ever had. Click the link below or visit hensonshaving.com slash andysly to get 100 free blades when you order a Henson razor and experience the difference for yourself. Now, for the first time ever, Tesla has sold its supercharger hardware to another charging network by striking a $100 million deal with BP Pulse. 
Now, this is a game changer because this will begin to address that big charging fear that many people have and will slowly kill off that fear once you start seeing this standardized charger experience at common places such as gas stations. Now, imagine if every gas station had just one Tesla V4 supercharger stall. That would be amazing in itself. And you're starting to see more and more newly built gas stations that have EV chargers. I experienced this recently on a road trip when I charged at the world's biggest Bucky's in Tennessee that has 24 Tesla supercharger stalls. I mean, come on, incredible. Round of applause to Bucky's. But now this new BP Pulse deal with Tesla will be monumental because they already have 27,000 charge points and plan to roll out more than 100,000 globally by 2030. As early as next year, these acquired Tesla chargers will be installed across the BP Pulse network, including at key BP, Amoco, Thornton's branded sites, Travel Centers of America locations, and at BP Pulse's large-scale GigaHub charging sites near airports and in major metro areas across the U.S. Now, why is this important? Well, obviously it's more EV chargers, but for people to go from a gas pumping experience that allows a 100% fill up in five minutes to an EV charging experience where currently there are different kinds of charging connectors and adapters and confusing acronyms and different charging speeds from different vehicle models, it's, it's a big change and scary to the people who are new to it. So the charging experience needs to be as close as possible to the gas station experience in order for EVs to succeed at mass production and mass scale in terms of speed and simplicity. Now with BP releasing Tesla supercharger hardware as their own BP branded chargers, it will hopefully set a trend with other charging networks in a similar way that almost all other car makers are adopting Tesla's Nax charger connector. This will make people familiar with the charger and how it looks and how it operates, especially since BP Pulse plans to implement the plug and charge protocol for a more seamless automatic payment process. BP said that according to Tesla's current policy, third-party operated ultra-fast chargers meeting Tesla's reliability and functionality requirements are featured in Tesla's vehicle UI and apps, and BP Pulse expects to uphold these requirements on its network. This means, although it's not a Tesla-branded supercharger, it should still show up in the Tesla navigation for even more fast charging options when traveling in a Tesla. Now that all sounds amazing, right? Well, yes, but some current Tesla owners might be a little frustrated with all these new superchargers being accommodating for non-Tesla vehicles. It's the can of worms with the current state of EV charging. Imagine a huge Tesla Cybertruck and a huge Ford F-150 Lightning parked next to each other at a crowded supercharger station and trying not to ding each other's doors, whether accidentally or purposefully, depending on the level of fanboyism. Or imagine you're in a $50,000 Tesla that you bought primarily so you could have access to the supercharger network only to pull up to a supercharger to see a Chevy Bolt taking the last spot when you know that a Chevy Bolt can only charge up to a measly 55 kilowatts. That's like waiting at a gas station for someone that is pumping gas at one fifth the max speed. Now, hopefully these are all exaggerated scenarios, but there will be some growing pains like this as we all try to collectively find a solution to the EV charging infrastructure problem. In fact, Tesla is already doing some things to persuade people to not spend excess time at superchargers. Recent Tesla software code points to a possible congestion fee if a person charges their vehicle past 80% at a busy supercharger location. Now, Tesla has already proven in the past that they will absolutely charge fees to irresponsible Tesla drivers when they introduce the idle fees that charge a fee by the minute if you don't move your car when it's done charging. And to be fair, this new congestion fee doesn't seem that unreasonable. Most trips actually are more efficient when you don't charge past 80% due to the way the charging speed dramatically slows when it gets to that high state of charge. But at the same time, what if a driver really needs that extra battery juice to reach their destination? Should that driver be penalized for that? Imagine a gas station not letting you go past three quarters of a tank. It's a slippery slope, but I think with the release of the V4 superchargers, along with the imminent standardization of the fast charging experience, it will make the future of all electric vehicles even brighter. And to round out the news with some rapid fire headlines, the Model S and X have a new color called Stealth Gray, which sort of looks like a darker version of Midnight Silver. The new Highland Model 3s have started deliveries overseas and there seems to be conflicting opinions on it. Is it the best Model 3 ever with the new front seats featuring bolstered side support and new headrests? Or have the removal of certain features such as ultrasonic sensors, fog lights, and wood trim leaving people dissatisfied? I guess we'll slowly find out. What do you think? 
That's it for this week's top Tesla news. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next one.